hold your head up It's cause he says figure it The time is now today Kuzobam nandi The feeling's getting stronger The world is yours to play It's a hundred Thank you. Thank you so much for being here and a very, very warm welcome to every single one of you. Yeah, my name is Tembe Gafilani and this is the 100% talk show where we give you 100% talk for 100% real people. And we are here on the way at Umshanga at Unique Cafe and we want to give a shout out. Let's give Unique Cafe a big round of applause for hosting us so wonderfully. Now it's going to be an awesome show today. We've got a guest that is absolutely amazing. We're going to talk to her. We're going to get to know a little bit about her so that you can really get 100% of who this guest is. But before we go any further, I did not just get to look like this, but there are some couple of people that I really like to thank. Thank you for just pulling this whole thing off. I'd like to thank um, Do Confidence Designs for making me look absolutely amazing um she is available at shop number three at ushara marine village walk i would like to thank m tech um, you can find them on facebook for our sound um, engineering um i would like to give a huge shout out to ismo denny creations for this wonderful jewelry you can also find them on all social media platforms they will they will custom make your jewelry and also they've got um, items that are for sale we'd like to give a huge shout out to Utalent and Zorbe for this amazing face piece it is available on all social media platforms as well right so without any further waste of time I know I'd like to welcome a lady she is a lady in every sense of the word she is a businesswoman she is a mogul she is everything that that really a young girl wants to be. She is a former actress and now she's a businesswoman and also a producer. So ladies and gentlemen, to sit down with us today and have an amazing conversation, please help me welcome with a warm, warm welcome. Uh -huh. Ma Machiretti. <laughs> busy woman but I'm um, just for you to make the time to be here we really really appreciate that okay. so mrs. Matibeli we know you from Fantuka after in the days of Yizo Yizo and I want to take you a little bit back a little bit further than that tell us about young smart growing up in deep kloof who is that little girl you know who is she what does this um Osma growing up in deep kloof was just a girl full of dreams and who doesn't really um, recognize or realize the situation of Kula mm. and but I think she she sees where she's going she may not understand at that time Uguti, where she wants to go but she she doesn't recognize sure. the environment of Kula mm. so when you say she doesn't recognize what just give us a little bit of, of a picture of how was the environment I don't think my story is unique than any other black child Okula yeah. um, I'm from a not well-to-do family mm. um, uh, with the thing with poverty is that you don't know that you're poor up until unless you, you know and did you, you go to your you friend's see, house you see who's, someone who's, a little bit rich. who's got French yeah. and cheese <laughs> Polonia and cheese in their bread so that was the case uh, not me so it was that so uh, for me as a community a in, in, in a very impoverished um, society yeah. it was normal up until we get to be exposed to other people then say, oh we're different mm. because of it's that I'd say to so mm. it's not the same yeah mm. But then we fast forward a little bit years later, you know, and then Smart is a little bit grown up. And then Ke Unomsa comes along mm -hmm. <laughs> from Yizu. Was that your, your first role, by the way? No, 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 it wasn't. Yeah. My first role was Utande from Gazlam. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Gazlam came before. You yeah, were in Gazlam before Yizu. Yes. 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 And the fast forward didn't just happen, hey? Okay. I worked very hard. Yes, um, yes. Uh, because my mother was also an actress, but because she didn't do that well with acting so my family was a bit reluctant with letting me go and pursue this mm. end of this career mm. so i had to to fight actually actually for my for my voice to be heard mm. in my family and so i worked hard yeah. so so hard because i didn't even have money to go to varsity okay so i started working um, mm -hmm. at fontana just to make sure that i raise enough funds to go and study sure uh, and then then there was um gazlam um I was trained with community yeah. theatre and also we 
I did e journalism with um, a certain college, and then then there was Gazlam, and mm -hmm. then then there was Yizo Yizo. Yeah. And then there was no, but let's let's go back for a second to Gazlam. Tell us the process there. So SMA and Varsity, you know, Young, and to Gazlam. What was the auditioning process? You know, what was the selection process? What was the process for you getting onto Gazlam? I think I was so fortunate that um, at that time, because I grew up in a in a in a culture of a theatre. So with theatre, you sure. find that most directors, great directors, mm. will not actually wait for you to come to town and audition. They will go to the, like, hey, the township, one hour, oh. mm. they'll go to the township mm. and mm. identify talent. So that's how I was identified. So you had been acting before, so you were quite accustomed, you know, yeah. to, to being a thespian, right? But actually being on TV and, and playing um, in Gazlam, how was that? How was that? It was awesome. Mm. It was a different experience than theatre which is my first experience with regards to acting. Uh, but it was lovely, um, a new environment, and tasting a fame. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was okay. Yeah. Um, obviously, with, with user user, the role was bigger, and the fame was bigger. And yeah, the growth mm. was even much, much, much bigger. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the character um, from, from Kazlam, how different or similar were you two ladies? Completely different, ah. because Tandy was a girlfriend KGP at that time, uh -huh. uh, I told her somewhere a tavern. Um, but when you go to um, Izo Izo, Izo Izo, it was Nomsa who was a virgin. Mm. Bless her heart. Bless Nomsa's <laughs> heart. <laughs> so um, and then Nomsa mm. being a virgin, um, a, 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 a studying medicine, a vet, and then very passionate about mm. education, mm. met this guy, fell in love with the Javas. Fell in love with hey, the Chavas, guy. of all people, you know, Chavas, you know. Fell in love with the Chinese guy, carried yeah. the story of many young girls who mm. from a township and go to varsity, fall in love, but still don't lose hope. Mm. Contrary to what most people believe, would, most of us who come from the township, we go to university, we fall in love, we get pregnant. Nomsa did not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was steps. more of a, like, a, yeah, like a, a going against the status quo, so yes. to speak. But you realized at that time how much of an honor it was to play Nomsa. Absolutely. And I think for me, my aha moment came when uh, Nomsa's character was recognized at the Venice 2004 Film yes, and TV for a yes. human, I think, human rights mm. awards. So that for me was like, oh wow, Nomsa Sma. is really an important character. Exactly. So mm. Nomsa had a huge impact on society and mm. everyone, not only locally but internationally. Mm. But being part of Yizo Yizo, though, I mean, that in itself was just a revolution, you know. So how how did that make you feel? It's funny with Yizo Yizo because the first series of Yizo Yizo, I used to watch it. My tal Yizo Yizo, there was this thing in the, the schools where like everyone wanted to provide action. And I didn't think which one day I will be Yizo Yizo. Mm. I wanted to be Serafina. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, note that. We'll, we'll that. Yes, you want so, to be Serafina. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and years later, I think three years later, then I'm one of the cars I'm playing with mm. For me, it was like, okay, yes, dreams do come true, eh? My yeah. dreams are valid. <laughs> and they are valid, black girl. Yeah. So, oh, faith. Yes. It's a good fight. <laughs> you were part of the Hotline series. <laughs> no, that was the, it was such an aha moment for me. And I was like, looking, who's a smart character? And I found Ufaith. Yes. Ufaith became like a martial arts something, yes. you know? Tell us about Ufaith. Tell us about the magnitude of that role. For Ufaith, I had to train... Uh, I think it's a Thai, um, I think it's Thai martial arts. Tai Chi like, or Tai Chi? Tai Kwon Do yeah, Jiu Jitsu. I think it's Tai Chi. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say Tai Chi, but okay. I think it's a Tai but it's a Tai Chi yes, martial yes. arts. So I had to train with Master Lee. Mm -hmm. So Master Lee was from uh, China mm. and we had a process just before we went on production to train. It was my first time ever. Yeah, and how was that? Like, yeah, it was very hard. It was difficult. Did it take lots of mental discipline? It did. Lots of body. Mainly because it's not like martial arts, like karate, mm -hmm, karate that mm -hmm. you uh, look shin that you mm, or it's, kia kia, but yeah, it's about movement and and subtleness. Mm. And I think it did help me come to think of it, because you need to, with tai chi, you need to be firm on the ground. Wow. Okay. And be still. And only your body moves as as if it's blown by the wind. So you are you are alert of your surrounding, 
but your body must move as if it's blown mm. by the wind. Lots but of spiritual connotations absolutely, around. Absolutely, but yeah. you need to, your, your feet need to be firm on yeah, the ground. Yeah. That, I think, did contribute to my life, to be quite honest. And I think some of the things that I learned was that if I drink gin, um, boiled water mm -hmm. with ginger, Okay. I thought you were yes, saying gin. If I, if I drink gin, no, then I feel very gin. sent <laughs> my <Ja>. life. <laughs> yeah. Every morning, um, it actually gives me energy. Listen, I'm just so frustrated with the amount of supplements and medications that are out there. You know, I even wrote on Facebook and I'm like, what is happening, really? And one of them said, it gives you natural energy, but it's a pill. It's so it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit contradictory. It's like, how does yes. it give you natural energy, but it's a cancer? But that's a topic for another day. Mm -hmm. But the character of faith, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about it. Just give us the overview, give us the plot the synopsis of what happens in Faith's life. Faith is from the rural outskirts of KwaZulu Natal, and as as you know, her mother passed away because of HIV and AIDS, mm. and she's from the household at homes as well. So she was the eldest in the family mm. with a sister and a younger brother. Mm. So she went to Johannesburg looking for greener pastures. Mm -hmm. She went there and she worked uh, in some fashion shop, mm. um, some in small streets, mm. and then she got fired. Um, and then she was hired and seen by this Chinese guy. Mm. This guy hired Faith to come and work in this little corner sh Chinese shop. And it happened that on one of these days, Faith um, mm. got marked and raped. Sure. And I think that's where the story of Faith unfolds. Because this guy didn't know much about Faith. There was a language barrier. Mm. The guy didn't speak English. Faith didn't speak English or Chinese. So... Mr. Lin. Wait, wait, wait. So, Mr. Lin is speaking Chinese. Yes. Faith is speaking is Zulu. And a bit of Fanagalo. Okay, okay. And they're yes. trying to communicate and make the things yes. to be done. So okay. Mm -hmm. Faith tries and communicates with Mr. Mm. Lee. So, Mr. Lee has never seen her daughter in ages. So, the daughter keeps on writing and the family keeps on writing, but he doesn't want to open the letters. I'm not sure what happened in his life. But up until I find out, um, and I know there's a, there's a voice, the voice of reason, Mr. Winston Jonah, mm -hmm. and who actually became the voice of reason when he used to come and deliver the letters. Mm. And that's how I get to know, the, how, how Faith got to know the story behind Mr. Lee. Mm -hmm. Then throughout, Mr. Lee makes Faith understand mm. that for you to deal with everything in your life, you need to be still. But I really just want to know about overall about your acting career, right? You know that you've been away from the acting um, space a little bit. But um, so how has that journey been? Just overall, number one. Number two, are you going to be returning anytime soon? Acting has been amazing. For yeah. me, acting is like, it's not a no, it's a no brainer for me. Okay. I don't have to, um, if you say smart act now, mm. I can. Okay. But obviously with growth and with more experience, I choose with roles that I'd like to to play and why I haven't been acting for a while it's because I wanted to I wanted to do more okay, acting does get, did give me an opportunity to open doors so, for me okay but I wanted more mm. I wanted to give other people a space now to come in and experience what wow. I experience okay so for me it was a matter of growth I wanted to try things speaking of under your terms I know you are a producer now yes. as well so tell us about the stuff that you've produced what have you worked on I've, I've done radio um, content creation same thing with acting mm. it's it's just god's given talent that i polish each and every day so with producing from radio to tv i did a documentary with ulin dasbia uh, initially when i used to work with him as a mm -hmm. producer of mm -hmm. um google's fm mm -hmm. breakfast show yeah mm -hmm. i asked him and i said can i do a documentary okay. what i'm passionate about mm -hmm. and he said to me it's fine, so as long as you're going to finish it within a year. And I said, it's mm. going to be difficult for me to tell someone else's story within a year. Mm. My approach is more of about three years. I think the first year, I will get Mr. Magic. Mm -hmm. The Great. second year, I need to get Linda Sibia. Yeah. We did the first and second year, the third year, and then he, he then left SABC for whatever oh, reasons. Okay. We, catch, okay. catch, we continue to capture that. Okay. And then the fourth year, now I think it's the sixth year. Mm. So the, the, the documentary is done. So, okay. But it's actually taken six years, really. It's six years. Full six Beautiful. years. Beautiful. It's done. Yeah. Uh, it's just that we need to... And when do you sure. expect to see it? When we do just we need to it? make sure which, which channel we're selling it to. Yeah. Mainly because this is not my story. Okay. This is Linda's story. Please, so please, as much as this please. is a business between the two of us, but I need also to respect. Mm. This is his story. So he needs to tell me which way do we go from here. Okay. Because he was very... 
uh, clear with certain things. It says, Ma, I don't want anything to be edited. Mm. So, okay, maybe we can take one to say, no, no, no. Let, no. let it be gritty. Let it really let it be, be real. Yeah. So we, in that we should get him on the show. Let it be 100%. You Absolutely. know, we want to be real and legit with the And things. then there's another documentary mm. called Differently Able, which we in negotiations now with. Um, a big channel that I would not mention. <laughs> okay, but look out for that. Um, differently able. Wait, wait. Before we go to differently able, the Linda Smear documentary. What would that be called? Do we have a name yet? Um, no. No, we don't. No. Okay. And so, are you also leaving it to him as well? No, Just that one is a, it's, it's between the two of us for, for, for oh, us okay. to decide. Right now, differently able. Yeah, you were telling us a little bit about that. Differently able. Mm. It's. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> in short, people, yeah, to take the low thought and make it short. It's but basically, awesome. it's about uh, people living with different kinds of disabilities, okay. but who have made a name out of themselves mm. from that. So mm. people don't feel sorry for themselves, mm. but people who are who are successful beyond courage. Mm. Why do you feel passionate to tell the story? Because I think there's more to human beings than just what we see yeah. outside. It's just that sometimes it's how far are we willing to push ourselves. Mm. Okay, we're actually running out of time. Um, tell us about um, the place, Unique Cafe, that we are here. Thank you so much for having us in your place. So tell us about that and tell us about Calvin and Family and all the amazing work that you do with it. I'm a group CEO of Calvin and Family, which has nine entities. And also we have a creative agency, advertising agency, and a restaurant in hospitality. And we also have a production house, which is Black Park Media. I just work. I work. Yes, and, yeah. and what is the future of Smamati really? What else can we expect from you, Mogal? I think I haven't I haven't worked as much as I'd like to. Oh. I'm very passionate about making sure that women are more empowered. Mm. Um, I'm for women emp e emancipation. And mm. um, I think the day I, s I see that e leadership is seen as leadership, mm. not as women in leadership, I'll be happy. Two seconds. Tell us like, quickly about that, about Smart Table. Smart Table is just a, it's a concept um, uh, where we, I, we empower women uh, from business to uh, the well-being of a woman to accepting who they are. Mm. So this year again, we're doing it. So we have Durban, uh, Johannesburg and Bumalanga. And the other one I will not reveal for now. Okay. We're definitely going uh -huh. overseas with the uh -huh. last one. We're going to close. Yes. Amazing. I'm not so it's more about that. As much as I like putting women together to mm. discuss, but I'm not for putting women together to discuss about problems. Mm. For me, it's about having women, putting them on the table, and let's discuss how do we emancipate ourselves. That was Mama Timeli, everyone. Thank you so much. Time is really such. You know, it's a message to the Inja. I'm not going to say that. No good to come up, no good to why it is. But please, a round of applause for Mama Timeli. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Ah, oh, it was absolutely amazing. Yay! And as always, my name is Tembega Vilani, and this is the 100% Talk Show, where we give you 100% talk for 100% real people. And these are the real people that we're going to be having on our set. But you, please, don't have and we're going to invite you as well because we want to talk about the things that matter to you, Durban, to you that is out there. So remember, I love you so much, but the one who loves you more is God. All right, bye. Thank you.